Uh, we are here with Professor Zygmunt Bauman at our second appointment with Novellara. In the first edition of Uguali Diversi, uh, four years ago, he spoke of the darkness of postmodern. In the meantime, the collaboration has been going on with other opportunities to meeting, Modena and Sarzana. The text of which were published in the book La Società uh, Insicura, printed this year by Aliberti. This time, <coughs> the theme is community, a theme which is uh, very dear to Bauman, starting with the missing community, in Italiano Voglia di Comunità, in 2001, until the last title, just out now, Cose che abbiamo in comune, 44 letters uh, uh, from the liquid modern world. Living together, sharing, community, is a concept which Bauman often insists on as to mitigate the difficulty of the relationships in society and therefore elusive liquid where relations as are fragile, change quickly, go to others who appear more interesting. And then let's talk about community. Let's try to clarify this idea. When it comes to community, I cannot help but think of the old distinction of Ferdinand Tennis, who in 1887, in a period of acute social crisis, opposed the community, Gemeinschaft, the organic union between individuals with the same interests and the common project, to society, Gesellschaft, which is largely a system of formal relations necessary laws to civil society. Do you agree with these ancient distinctions? Uh, well, what Tennis presented uh, community and uh, society, Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft, yes. as the stages in the historical development. Uh, he spoke about the passage from people living in a community to people living in an impersonal, abstract, Totality, uh, later to be called by Melting Anderson, as you know, uh, imagined totality. Uh, and uh, he simply thought that uh, the passage to Gesellschaft means that the Gemeinschaft does not exist any longer. Mm. It is a replacement <coughs> of one form of cohabitation by another. Uh, it, was, it is not as the things are uh, seen today at least since uh, Victor Turner, um, about, I think it was in 1960s or 1970s, presented uh, what he called, to distinguish himself from tennis, he called it communitas e societas, uh, using the Latin terms, uh, presented them as coexistent, coexistent forms of human involvement, human engagement, human belonging. <coughs> we live uh, at the same time in a communitas and societas. There are two aspects of human existence. One is based on uh, personal relationship, uh, on face-to-face um, -face contacts, or uh, of uh, physical and moral proximity. The other is uh, organized, so to speak, at long distances and long distance in relationship between uh, uh, individual and his immediate surroundings and a <coughs> big uh, point of reference, so to speak, frame of reference. You, uh, you are a modern person, for example, but you inscribe yourself into Italian totality, Italian totality which you never explore personally in full, uh, you just know uh, bits and pieces around, but nevertheless it exists uh, in your mind as a totality. As a totality with its own demands, with its own uh, offerings and its own uh, laws which it uh, actually wants you to obey. It. obey. Uh, and according to Victor Turner it is uh, absolutely indispensable that we have both for, uh, for, uh, frames of reference at the same time, we wouldn't survive in a pure uh, 
societas without community. We would not survive. There would be no air to breathe, so to speak, allegorically. It, it is too dry, too inhuman. Um, it, what gives it the flesh is precisely the uh, experience, because you can have direct experience only what, of what is within your sight and within your touch, within your reach, and so on. So we have uh, now, uh, in spite of what Teddy suggested in 19th century, now in 21st century we still have communities. We still have communities, which doesn't mean, of course, that they don't change their form and their way of acting. They do. Uh, uh, with the development of means of transportation, for example, that's very important. Uh, the, what uh, the French would call le pays uh, is not any longer 20 kilometers long, but say 200 kilometers long. You travel to the nearby towns, you go, you, you may work far away, geographically, far away from where you live, uh, so it expands a bit. But also it, uh, the means of transportation, of connection, uh, with the sphere of the uh, personal experience expands. Expands, expands uh, mostly thanks to uh, the recent development in the, in the past 20, 30 years, the appearance of digital communication. Um, the, in fact, the abolition of uh, geographical distance. It doesn't exist any longer, it's not an obstacle. You can travel uh, not only around your community, you can travel around the world without moving an inch from your chair. You can sit in your chair, have your laptop in front of your iPad, and you can travel. And uh, uh, you can have ostensibly, allegedly, seemingly direct experience. I say seemingly because it's not exactly the same uh, as, you know, touching each other and sitting next to, next to each other and talking for hour and two and so on, looking one another into eyes. And it's not the same, but nevertheless, it looks like, it feels like direct experience of far away, far away lands very often to connect with somebody living in, uh, say, New Zealand is easier than connecting with somebody who lives uh, uh, next street to you, because this one next street to you may be busy and not able to, to talk to you or uh, went on holiday or uh, I don't know what else he might be doing, perhaps he has uh, some personal secrets, which prevents him from opening the door when you are knocking. Uh, but, the, but the friend in New Zealand is always there. Whenever you push the button, he's there. You send the Twitter, and uh, after a while you get your reply and so on. So it feels like a community. But it is called network. Network. And, uh, I don't know whether no, I should stop here no, or... Because, because no, because, because I wanted to say a few words what is like the difference that. between <laughs> community... You answer to the, the second question. No, no, be between the community and network, you know, there's a big <coughs> difference, really. Uh, I would say you gain something and you lose yeah. something. It's an exchange <coughs> uh, act. It's not just the pure change. <laughs> Without return, you are just balancing between the two possibilities. One offers what other does not, and the other uh, doesn't offer what the first does. So it's always a matter of choice. Yes. Uh, what is different be between community and uh, uh, network yeah. is that community is enforcing itself on you, while network is something you think you create yourself, so you are in control. That's the essential difference. Mm. Uh, to community you belong. You have been, you, I don't know where you were born, in Carrara or in Belvedere, but uh, you didn't choose that. Uh, it was a matter of fate, so to speak. You were born there and not, say, in Florence, and not in Stockholm, and not in Beijing, but in Carrara, for example. 
uh, that's not something you have chosen. It is uh, something which precedes you and will never go away. You will be always a yes. person born in Carrara until you die. No choice. Uh, second difference, uh, community is uh, demanding. Community knows that you are its member. Uh, it has uh, either written or carried carry it in mind, register of all members of community, and it does have a stipulation, a, a series of stipulations, what the member of this particular community should do, how he or she should behave. And community watches you. And if you deviate from the pattern, if you don't obey, then you are punished. You may be even exiled mm -hmm. uh, from the community. But you are punished, you are looked as a sort of a traitor, uh, abnormal, or whatever. Uh, that is community. That the fact that community wouldn't go away, that it will always there, is the cause for your feeling secure, secure. It is not something which is fluid, it is not something which is liquid, it won't go away, it will be there, whatever you need to appeal to the place to which you belong, it is always waiting. So you gain insecurity. What you lose is in freedom, because you are watched, you are observed, you are surveyed, and you are punished if you deviate, so your uh, range of choices is limited, right? Network, on the other hand, is what you create. You create. You are the hub, uh, you know, the central point. Around you, the network is organized. Uh, you select it. Uh, and it is very easy to select it and deselect it. Uh, selection requires simply pushing a few buttons and Opting out also requires no more than pushing a few buttons. So it is all very, very easy. You feel free. If you don't like it, you change your network. Or you simply efface the names of some people from your network. You don't want to contact them any longer. You are free to do so, unlike in community. Yes. Community is there, you have very little to say who belongs. Uh, the community decides itself, right. In that work you are free. On the other hand, what you lose is security, which community offers, but the network doesn't. Uh, there is an English saying, the friend in need is a friend indeed. So only a uh, person who, on, on whom you can rely that he will come whenever you need him, only that is the real friend. But the friends on network, as you know, are no. ephemeric, ephemeric, yes. they come and go. Uh, you probably, most of them you never meet and you have no idea what they are doing when uh, they are not twittering you, so if, if they at all are, because sometimes they don't even care about your existence, very often they are not aware that they are your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Only you are aware of that. So it is all very imaginary, imaginary, but it is a sort of illusion which helps you to survive period, our period, period in which we all fear being excluded, abandoned. Uh, exclusion is the major fear of our times. Exclusion in all sorts of uh, dimensions. Exclusion from your position in society. You have earned a position. Everybody did one position, higher or another, lower, doesn't matter. But there is a place in society which we have earned. But it could be refused to you at the time. You could be kicked out from your work, you could be demoted. Um, there may, may be another round of redundancy in your company. The company may cease to exist, go bankrupt or be bought over by a bigger company. So suddenly you find yourself without uh, placement, uh, just hanging in thin air. Yeah. That's one dimension. Another dimension is partnership, uh, which is also very loose and brittle, and uh, it can fall apart very easily. And, uh, and you are again losing, uh, l losing your placement in the order of things. Yeah. So uh, the, this network is a substitute 
for the real thing, for the old-fashioned community, which offers, offers a lot of security at the expense of a lot of freedom. freedom yes. But uh, nevertheless, we need both. We need both freedom and security. Uh, there are two values without which the uh, endurable, tolerable life is unthinkable. Uh, freedom without security is complete chaos and disorientation. Uh, uh, security without freedom is slavery. So pure security is awful and pure freedom is awful. You need both. But how to reconcile them? That's a very difficult problem. The lack uh, of a community that is uh, of strong uh, links uh, will not be responsible for certain behavior uh, that stifled individuals, uh, such as abuse of psychopharmaceuticals, uh. drugs, uh, and uh, alcoholic abuse, above all alcoholic abuse, that are recently become a common practice among young people. Yes, I want... Uh I don't know, perhaps I'm wrong, perhaps I'm right, I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, uh, the novel developments which you just mentioned uh, are too, uh, too, too young to, be, to generalize about them, when they're going to stay. It could be, it could be a, uh, an, another uh, problem, uh, another reason, another cause of the phenomenon, simply young people uh, who are not receiving, in our times, a set uh, list of rules which they have to obey. Mm -hmm. Rules are very unclear, they are exposed to all sorts of authorities. Uh, school and parents, which were decisive, say, 100 years ago, in setting this uh, starting point. You know, here is where you need to inhabit and uh, where, where, where from you get the instructions, binding instructions for your life. Now, parents and school, uh, schools are now one of uh, many different authorities which compete uh, for each other, with each other, for the influence. Which authority uh, speaks with more authority than the other? Uh, there is only as much as the manipulation of the school curriculum can change in the behavior of young people because they are also exposed to, uh, whenever they open Facebook they are bombarded with commercials mm -hmm. commercials which are very attractive very often they speak much interesting language that their parents and can the, do and uh, so they listen very carefully it's tempting and and then they go um, uh, at the evening, in the evening to a nearest pub with their friends, with their colleagues, and they see how they behave, and they all demand some sort of conformity. You have to dress yes. in a similar way. You can't stand out from the crowd. And then they go to school, and in the school there is the constant pressure of the mates uh, to have the latest edition of iPhone, and have the latest uh, uh, design of sneakers, you know. And if you if you depart from the pattern, you are you are uh, well, you, you are threatened with uh, with exile, really, with banishment from a good company. You are object of bullying and things yeah. like that. So there are many, many. Uh, we we don't know where education is located today. Uh, they are not, everything educates. You go along the street and there are posters and there are advertisements. They are educating you. Uh, school is educating, television is educating, Twitter educates oh, you, uh, messages from your so-called friends on Facebook are educating. Uh, and uh, under this, uh, contradictory pressures, because they are not coordinated in any way, um, people, young people are experimenting, what you mentioned, you know, trying alcohol, trying drugs, trying uh, what, what, what else uh, you have called, uh, uh, stupefacenti and the alcohol, uh, uh, psychopharmacy. So, uh, they, they need tranquilizer of their doubts, tranquilizer. What is the common denominator among things which you call is that they tranquilize the anxiety. Mm. For a 
brief moment, they just inject a little bit of certainty. I'm doing the right thing. Why? Because so many others are many doing others. The, the same. So many people cannot err at the same time. You know. To feel equal uh, to uh, Right. And uh, uh, the uh, community aspired, community, traditional aspired, aspired for monopoly. Mm. That community wanted to have the first and the last word. Mm. But now there is no equivalent to that. Um, there are many, many different words around. Um, and uh, the community also uh, was based on solidarity. Every, everybody, it, it pressed towards uniformity. Thanks God, it never achieved full conformity, but he, it wanted uh, uniformity. Uh, one pattern for everybody. And uh, uh, one pattern for everybody and forced through solidarity. We are, what, what, what solidarity means? It is the old, old saying going back to ancient times, one for all, um, uh, all for one. Yeah. We are all in the same boat, we are all uh, caring for each other, I care for, the, for everybody else, everybody else is caring for me. We are in living in fragmented society, fragmented, fragmented and uh, what is more, uh, fragments are not once and for all divided, is settled. They are themselves fluid and short-lived. So fragments change as well uh, in the, into which society is, um, yeah, uh, is uh, divided. And because it is that, it is only natural that people are being unsure of what is the right way of proceeding, are trying this, trying that, you know, they're experimenting, they're experimenting. I would say that it is not probably the lasting damage, it is just the, the uh, preliminary stage before entering a settled society. Young people have to experiment with all sorts of choices. Some of them are falling into this experimenting passion forever and they are lost. But that's a marginal phenomenon, I think. Uh, as a sociologist, I'm much more interested, really, with the trends which uh, have the more lasting and more universal impact. Uh, that's interesting. That, that's what I'm paying attention to when I compare the old-style community with the newfangled networks. Okay. Uh, let's speak about uh, classes, uh, social classes. About social classes. In your latest books, uh, you don't speak of uh, social classes any longer. But I remember that in, in uh, one book of yours, Memories of Class, written in uh, 1982, you claim that the classes are originated from the industrialization and provide the class consciousness, historically determined to have uh, a temporary duration. Richard Rorty speaks of an overclass, while Marc Auger postulates the existence of three classes where the dominant is an oligarchy of economic power. Is it still possible today to speak of classes in a liquid society? Good question. Yeah, Max Weber <coughs> uh, very importantly said, it is largely forgotten now, Marx before him said the same, that there is class in itself and class for itself. Mm. It's a Hegelian term, as you remember, in, uh, in itself and for itself. In itself, that means we belong to the same class because we are cast, forced, pushed into the same con social condition. Mm -hmm. Not by our choice, not because we wanted that for one reason or another, but okay. simply because they, these are objective factors uh, in my little book, uh, Art of Life, I said that uh, uh, human itinerary, life itinerary, is shaped by two different factors. One is fate, the other is character. Fate is the shorthand name for everything on which we don't have any control. As I mentioned before, the fact that you were born in Carrara, if you have, uh, that is fate. You haven't chosen it, you have no control over it. Right, okay. Uh, in the same way, you don't have any control 
over in which class you were born. Uh, this class in itself, you are simply put in the same conditions and therefore uh, you need willy-nilly, whether you like it or not, you need to um, act uh, similarly to other people. Class is in a sense a factory of solidarity. Uh, but solidarity is already a matter of character, a matter of choice. It is not, a, you, solidarity means passing from class in itself into class for itself. You are not only located in this class, but you are aware that you are located in this class. And because of that, you want to join forces, you want to stand uh, shoulder to shoulder, and you want to uh, unite uh, uh, with others in the similar conditions in order to improve those conditions, in order to fight for a better deal uh, in society. Uh, but that is possible only, I repeat, if the community is still a factory of solidarity. And in society of producer, it was like that. The workers lived in the same tenements, in the same streets of the little town. Uh, at seven o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning, there was a siren from the factory. They all emerged from homes, uh, went in the same direction. They passed through the same gate, they were, which was locked. And they were locked in, within the same walls for the next eight or nine hours or ten hours sometimes standing uh, shoulder to shoulder, doing exactly the same things, having exactly the same awful, brutal uh, foremaster uh, uh, who, uh, uh, or supervisor. Uh, they were uh, suffering the same penalties for disobedience and so on. And then after the work, they went to a little room where the trade union meeting was. They compared their individual experience and they found out that they are identical, that we are all in the same, in the same condition, really. So perhaps uh, we need to do something about it together, together, together. Nothing like that exists today because contemporary offices and factories are no longer schools of solidarity, they are schools of competition. Of competition, yes. Uh, uh, the whole philosophy of management has changed uh, in recent years. It is no longer managers who want to introduce order. It is employees who need to bring themselves into order and prove that they are doing it better than the next door, uh, than the uh, next man. So when it